Hey, what's up, guys? It's Navarro, head trader, Penny Stocks Club 13. And in this video, I'm gonna go over last week's trades. Just a quick review. I'm gonna talk about some psychological uh, points, pointers here, and also we'll go into the watch list at the end of the video. So, before that, I just wanna give you a quick disclaimer, guys. Um, this is not financial advice. Anything I do or say, I'm going to tell you what to buy, what to sell, you trade at your own risk. Right? So, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the video. So, I am going to start with this quote that says, If your habits remain the same, you can't expect different results by Raphael Dr. Love. Now, I have a similar saying and people have a similar saying. The way I say it is, if you keep repeating the same things, you'll be getting the same results. Which makes sense, right? So sometimes we ask ourselves, why can't I just become profitable? But if you keep doing the same mistakes, you'll be getting the same results, guys. That's just simply the way it goes. Now, and on that note, um, I did have a very interesting conversation with one of my my golf buddies that used to be part of the PSC 13 uh, chat room. You know, never traded before he never traded before he just you know there was big buzz and fuzz about trading and he wanted to try it out try my service out and um, he blew up his account or not really blew it up but you know he wasn't making money but uh, you know I was asking did he if he watched the videos and of course that was a no was he taking the time to look at charts and learn how, how it works and of course that was a no so those are two two things that you know really if you expect to be profitable here just by following picks and by uh, blindly picking stocks guys that's not gonna work whether it's your hobby your business or just your life or, or anything you know if you want to be part of this trading a trading community be a trader then you have to invest time in your education and learning this you have to invest time in understanding how it works at least a general a general knowledge of how trading works and if you're not willing to do that guys then don't expect to be profitable all the time again I, I do have some very good picks but I don't not every pick that I have is gonna be a winner the difference between me and some of the beginners is that my risk management is way better than ever or you know as far as I, in my opinion my risk management is way better than most other traders and that's the reason I can be profitable all right because I accept my losses I accept when the trade doesn't work for the most part but 99% of the time I know I cut my losses and I can move on and leave my emotion, emotions in check now, emotions are something that everybody's gonna be battling with, including myself. And there will be rare situations where it, it take it gets the best of you. It gets the best of us, and that's happened. That's that's fine. As long as you understand that you can come back, keep them in check the next time, and and just move on from those mistakes, right? From those failed trades. Patterns tend to fail. I can show you the best flag pattern. Does not mean it's gonna work all the time it does not make it mean it's gonna work all the time but we trade it because it's a pattern and if enough people see it then it'll work but just because it's there it doesn't mean that it's gonna work 100% of the time you need to understand that that even the best patterns fail okay so that's where risk management management comes in and that's where I exceed other traders as far as me letting go of stock while others are just hoping that it'll come back it can't go down forever it can't go down forever we're trading small caps when you're trading small caps they can go down forever and then can never come back they can get delisted a number of things can happen guys they can get bought out and now you're trading a different stock it changes the entire uh spectrum of that of that particular stock so guys this is not a buy and hold forever there are some exceptions but we're I'm, i am not a fundamental trader so i cannot tell you which ones are going to be the ones that are going to go from one dollar to hundred that's for for financial advisors and even they get it wrong so 
Again, guys, do your due diligence. Invest time in your education. If you dedicate 30, 30 minutes to an hour reading a book about the market and watching videos about the market, that you know what? That's going to make you a better trader. Also, screen time. Screen time. Just watch the, how stocks trade. If you do not have access during the day, at night, there's on-demand features. There's videos on how the patterns set up, how they look when they're setting up. Just invest time in learning that. Okay, so here is what's going on with my buddy, guys. I have the watch list here. This is this is what he was doing, and uh, we nailed what his mistakes were. And it goes back to trader psychology, right? That that greed and that fear. So if you look at the watch list in the morning or in the afternoon, you know, whenever you you look at it, I had any watch list, not only mine, and I give you. These six options for for today for this is just for example right just to, to get the point across so let's say right now let's go ahead and, and just black this out so I give you six stocks a B C D E F whatever you know and this is the potential that each stock has right so stock a has 15% return potential stock B has 16% return potential stock C has 23 D has 54, E has 17, and F has 25. So basically what my buddy was doing is, oh, okay, I'm gonna go with a with option D because it has a 54% return. That's what I'm gonna trade, that's the one I'm gonna pick, and I'm gonna, I have $500 to invest, I'm gonna go all in on it. Now that's what he was doing. Um, wouldn't bother uh, as far as entry point, you know, where is the entry? And looking at the chart to see if it's actually gonna work or if that's gonna be the rejection or you know where's the exit it doesn't care as long as it gets to 54% I'm gonna I'm gonna treat this one okay now that's the wrong way to go about it there's no due diligence you're buying blindly and you're buying with greed now I put so many stocks here that have 30 40 percent returns and you've seen me not trade them because the pattern doesn't meet the criteria that I like for it to work Right? There's been so many here, there's a 45% return there, PHUN didn't materialize or hasn't materialized yet and you saw me take just a small 7, 7 to 8% profit on it, you know, and that's, that's the difference between me and somebody who wants to get rich overnight and that's just not the way it works and the thing was, and I remember this words, is that I would just see everybody on the, on the chat room, in the chat room, just post all the gains, all the wins, and you know, I want to make that kind of money too. So I just decided to throw all my, my account into it and, you know, my buying power into it and, and try to make as much money as you guys. And I said, well, yeah, that's truly, but some, some of us, especially me, you know, I've, I've earned my stripes. I have experience, I know what I'm doing, so I'm able to, to size up when the trade is gonna work, when I feel the heartbeat of that trade, that you know I'm able to just go all in and make the best out of it. Now, if you're not that type of experienced trader, what are, why are you investing so much money into something like that? You know, start off small, something that's not gonna be stressful and something that's gonna make it easy for you to make a decision to cut it something that's gonna make it easy for you to take profits that if if that's what you're battling with as far as psychology your greed and your fear then I suggest you start with that and if you cannot do that just like every other trader out there everybody else that you see on YouTube start with a simulated account okay so that's my two cents guys and I've been stressing this for so long but some of us fail to kind of take that information for what it's worth and you know we don't we don't want to go through the grind every day and we just want an easy way to get in get out make money and move on guys you gotta invest time on your education um so having said that guys let's go ahead and move on to to the trades right now let me go ahead and uh close this and open the charts so right now I do want to start up with with a spy here and then move on to last week's trades so here's what's going on in the overall market 
it's uh, right above and still inside this ascending wedge like I told you we do have the 9 crossing below the 20 EMA which is a bearish sign but we do have a big bounce it might come and touch it and then boom continue uh, moving moving lower if it breaks below this line then we can see probably a push or a move close to the 450 maybe even to the 180 SMA now that's not out of the norm where it actually fails to respect the trend line we've seen it before where we had this this upper trend right here it broke below it came back down and then it started making a, a bigger move right so that's something that can happen here as well it can break down be a false breakout and then boom make a, a move higher anyways let's go ahead and move on to last week's trade let's start with ADMP ADMP already have the technicals there my uh, price levels and let's go ahead and check out the trailer guys let's go ahead and go to the intraday five day three minute time frame the three minute because it's my favorite no no other reason so let's go ahead and go to the move here so we had an initial high of day came back down and I called it out right in these two candles where I said okay uh, potential initial high a day breakout that's what I put up on the what on the whatsapp group I entered my starter position here I added here I added here and I added my final and full size position right before the break of the HOD so I was adding 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 and I did mention that in the whatsapp group and then I said I'm looking for uh, I believe 85 I did take profits at 80 though uh, didn't let it go all the way up there but it took off took profits got out and did make try to make that uh, move to 85 now why did I uh, have this profit targets well let's go ahead and look at the one year white day again we're gonna trade in the smaller time frames this is where we enter our trades and exit our trades but we base our entries and exits off of the one year one day guys well why did I have 85 well there's this gap down here and there's that rejection that particular day exactly around 85 that's why I called out the 85 cent level I thought it was gonna get there but I did take profits at 80 and I just really didn't want to mess with any of this now I didn't catch the whole trade and that's fine I've been talking about this before uh, I've been saying this before let me just go ahead and go to the five day five day five minute and just show you the percentage move that I got so from entry to exit guys that's the part of the action that I caught I didn't catch the bottom and I didn't catch the top and that's completely fine but look at the part of the action that I caught I caught the biggest part and that's fine we don't always catch the bottom we don't always catch the, the top now if we talk about risk to reward ratio guys my stop level is gonna be at the bottom of this uh, of this support level here so this would be how much I'm risking This would be how much I'm risking versus how much I could make. So it's a very small percentage loss versus the huge gains that I got, right? So um, what I do want to mention now that we're talking about risk to reward, uh, I know I have a 5% rule and that can change as far as a dollar amount. If I enter with a thousand dollars and I'm risking 5%, then that, that would be a, a $50 loss, right? now if you're trading with a hundred dollars and you you want to risk ten dollars and that's a ten percent loss you can give it more wiggle room right so it all depends on how much money you enter with how much position sizing you enter with and then you take it from there it could either be a percentage loss for you or you can just be a simple dollar amount you can make your own rules you don't need to follow mine I just gave you mine on my website because that's what works for me and if you don't have a set of rules then you need them that's how successful traders trade they follow a specific set of rules that they either came up with themselves or they have their companies give them those rules and they have to follow the company's rules you can only lose so much per day or we're gonna shut down your account so if you take that approach that mental approach then you'll be on the right path as far as okay I'm gonna enter with hundred dollars I'm willing to lose ten dollars if I'm down nine eight dollars I'm gonna cut it I'm gonna let it go that's your 8 10 to 10 percent loss right if you just want to go with 5 percent across no matter what position sizing you take then that's fine too again just make sure you follow your rules follow your trade plan and stick to it stick to it stick to it stick to it so that's ADMP that was a trade guys initial HOD breakout 
and of course just I want to mention this before I move on there was this 9 EMA and 20 EMA crossover the TL the VWAP TL crossover right so we got the 9 crossing over the VWAP the TL VWAP crossover which is another educational video we got the initial head day video and we got the uh, TL VWAP crossover educational video so let's go ahead and move on to the other trait which was ECOR ECOR let me do the same thing here five day five minute okay uh, I don't think I need to use the three minute here I think this is more than enough so this was a different type of setup dude this was an afternoon uh, HOD breakout setup why what's the difference between initial high a day and HOD well here is how I can explain this so this was the initial high a day in the morning came back down broke over the initial high a day but then came back below it right so now now once I saw this okay I said okay it didn't it didn't take off after the initial high a day breakout here there was not enough volume did break out but came back in and now we've got that um, the uh, reclaim of VWAP and then just sideward action and then look at the increase in volume so I said okay as it was moving up I guess I do need the three minute time frame guys I need to explain something really quick so that I can drive a better point across and make this more educational for you so I did call it out on this candle and I said I added on this pullback because I saw the volume increasing okay so once I saw that here I saw that volume coming up coming up and increasing so I said okay then we need to start you know scaling into this I did add a full size and then I just caught the trade up to the 85 cent level now I don't even know why but I guess I saw the little pullback there and I said okay I gotta start taking profits and then it continued moving higher I didn't catch the entire trade but I did catch that good part of it but that's the reason that I entered because now we had that high a day breakout in the in an afternoon setup with volume starting to kick up you can see the volume just it was the highest it's been throughout the entire day and that's the reason ECOR was a successful trade so that's the difference between an initial high a day breakout and a high a day breakout okay either one it's the same idea just different type of setups so let's go ahead and move on to another trade uh, let me go to the one year one day just really quick okay so 85 guys I just took profits based on on, uh, on what was going on intraday and not based on what was going on on the daily now the best uh, I guess level that we could have traded to was a 90 cent level where there was this uh, previous support okay you can see that previous support that would have been a, a better target but again I didn't get to do that anyways that wasn't a successful trade and it's in the books uh, next one ECOR and we traded ESGC ESGC we'll go ahead and go to intraday today three minute again the three minute time frame is my favorite time frame so we're gonna go ahead and go I think I'm gonna need to add one more day guys excuse me apologize for the inconvenience three days okay all right so here we go so we had an initial high a day here that's our initial high a day and that's again another initial high a day setup right so it came comes back down I see this big pop this capitulation here with a price action and I started to see that line AMA starting to come above that that VWAP, that middle VWAP, that purple line. That's the 9 EMA is the yellow line. And then I saw that little VWAP crossover coming in. And it just traded sideways. I was adding, as, as I told you, we're looking for the initial high at tape breakout at around the, the 28, 25, point 28, 25 cent level. And sure enough guys once it broke out it just took off you saw the volume coming in and it was just a straight shot up I did call it out to the 35 cent level right here which was my final take profit so I did catch or we did catch the entire or the biggest part of this move again we didn't get the top and we didn't get the well, actually kind of 
almost the bottom right but in any case look at this big chunk this big move just a complete complete upward trend with a volume coming in and it was great so how did i come up with a 35 cent level guys let's go ahead and go to the one you want take that's the bottom of this sideways consolidation that 35 cent level was acting as support so that makes sense that it would be an act of resistance on this day it did go all the way up to 37 cents but then just came back in either way we took profits and now it looks like it wants to continue moving higher guys but we have the 50 ma so what i'm thinking about here is that if we get the 50 and 20 EMA price compression then we can look for a setup for the break over the 50 so it comes back in and it bounces at the 9 or the 20 now we got the 9 crossing over the 20 EMA which is a bullish sign and this 9 EMA is a momentum trade so if it comes down bounces up the 9 then we want to trade and start scaling into it and once it breaks the 50 this could be a 2-3 day swing or maybe even longer we don't know but that would be something that can happen in ESGC Let's go ahead and move on to the next one, last one. This one was traded on Friday. So this one was a huge breakout as well. Now let me show you the difference. This one was no, I didn't see any pattern here other than it was oversold, had some news. The news was good, the volume though. Let me go ahead and go back to the one year one day. Look at the relative volume strength. There's no volume at all, with the exception of this huge sell off day. But look at the volume down here at oversold. It's just huge guys. Let's go ahead and go to the one day three minute and remove this another initial high a day setup guys we got the initial high a day here so that's the initial high a day a little closer the initial high a day is right there at the top of that candle comes back in and now i wanted to trade the breakout of the initial high a day i call it out here i add it here because it started to break out, it did, comes back in, and then the 9 EMA, which is the, the momentum trend line, bounced off of there, I said, okay, we're good to go, add a little more, and then I did call this one out to the two level, it broke a little bit higher, but I did scale out, I did take profits, my first take profit, guys, was here at 160, and you can see how it consolidated there, it took off, then I took more profits at, uh, or I think I got out here at 189. That was my final take guys. So on my scale up method, I believe I caught like a 27% return. So from my entry to my exit was like a 37% return, but I took three quarters off here and then the, the last over here. So it averaged out to like a 25, 27% return. And this is the move that I caught guys from entry to exit. Go ahead and do this here. That's the part of the trade that I caught, the middle part, which is the body of the trade, the chunkiest part of the trade. Uh, didn't catch the entire bottom, didn't catch the entire top, but this was still a great return on investment. And now let's go ahead and break down why um, I took profits at 160. Let me go to the one year one day. I took profits at 160 very simply because we got the 50 EMA that was going to act the resistance. It did act the resistance. It started flagging there because everybody was, you know, there's a psychological resistance level that everybody sees, but there was enough buying pressure to break through it, which that's exactly what happened. And that's why it continued moving higher after it broke out. Then why did I say it can go all the way to the two level guys? Because the two level is a psychological report, uh, uh, resistance and support level. We have this two here where, um, you know, it did break above. So that's exactly where it stopped in between both those uh, previous rejections. Now it did make that higher move, but again, I saw the $2 level as a psychological resistance level. <laughs> Went all the way up to 216, yeah, it's okay. We caught, the, we caught the chunkiest part of the move. Now let's go on to next week's watch list. I'll try to go a little faster, guys. This video is running a little longer than I, than I expected, but um, RELI, RELI, guys, has been in an uptrend. Volume has been increasing. Today broke above, or on Friday broke above the $8 level and broke above the 860 level, which was recent resistance. You can see that 60 cent level, $8.60 level being resistance. It broke and closed above it. And that $8 level where it got rejected the previous day 
this candle made a new high, a little bit of increase in volume. So what we can expect here is a pullback to the 860 and then continuation. And this one does have a lot of short interest. So if the conditions are right, then we can see a huge short squeeze. Where can it go? I'm thinking $15 guys, maybe even higher. If we look at the daily pattern, it's made a high of $42. Oh my God, man. I mean, I, I cannot tell you it's gonna go all the way up there, but you can see how, how big of a move it can make. Now, I don't think it's gonna make that huge move. Uh, it, I don't know, it can't, but I, I'm thinking 15 where we got this uh, close right here. So this candle's closed. That's where it closed on that particular day. So I'm thinking 15 around there. That could be a good short squeeze, but you gotta be ready for everything. Scaling that would be how I would go about this. PSTI. PSTI, guys, I'm thinking that the momentum is starting to turn. So uh, on this one, I expect it to come in a little bit and then move higher, but we'll keep this one on watch. If it breaks over the 50 EMA, then we got room all the way to the $2 level, to the $3 level, excuse me where there's previous rejection. Not only is there previous rejection, but we got the 180 SMA, which will also act as resistance. So we got all this room to work with. We get, we just gotta make sure that we have enough volume and the conditions are there. HEPS, HEPS, we've got this little flag pattern. Now we wanted to break over that 20 EMA. So an entry at $2, guys, we have room all the way up to 265 where there was previous rejection here. A move like that would render us a good 30% return. So again, uh, we gotta keep it on watch. B E R B, B E R B. I have my pattern already there. This ascending wedge pattern. If it breaks out, then we got room. We we do gotta anticipate the 150 level to be some resistance. But if it does break out, then we got that 170 uh, price level where there's this uh, previous rejections. So B E R B, guys. We do wanna watch some volume come in as it breaks out if it happens ACST ACST guys similar pattern here broke above 50 came back in broke again so this is the rule of three if it breaks over the third time we're hoping or we're assuming right we don't want to hope we want to make sure that it happens if it breaks over the 50 we want to see that that huge candle with rejection or with resistance at this previous high at this pattern's previous high which would be at 180 that return right there if it breaks over the 50 and that would be our entry will give us about a 24 25 percent return again guys we're looking for five to ten percent returns but we get more than that we always want to lock in profits because in penny stocks that's the way it works that's usually your high percentage moves uh you do get five to ten percent moves every single day but when you're getting 20 25 30 percent return you're in the high probability uh range as far as percentage return goes with all these stocks and that's what you want to be locking in. We do get our 50, 60, 70% percent returns, but those have a lesser uh, probability of happening over and over again. So the higher percentage return on a penny stock would be anywhere between your 15 to 30, 40% return. Those happen more often than the 50, 60s and 100% return. So again, if it happens and you're, you happen to be within that percentage return locking in, that is a very good return on this kind of stocks. Guys, that is it for me. We'll catch you in the next one.